Before I get started, I first want to mention a couple of things about the gang box. This older gang box is similar to the one I'll be tying into in the bedroom wall. As you can see, there are a number of these circular tabs located on the sides of the box. These tabs are called knockouts. There are different size knockouts on various types of boxes, but these knockouts on this old box are three quarter inches. Now I'm going to be knocking out the tab in the center of the back of the box. You'd normally do this by taking a screwdriver or some other device and simply punching it out from behind. But I can't do that to the box that's already embedded in the wall. So in order to remove the knockout from the box in the wall, I'll get a decent sized drill bit and simply drill it out. At some point while you're drilling through the knockout, it should come loose and fall out and you'll see your three quarter inch opening. The very first thing we've got to do before we touch anything is go find the breaker box and figure out which breaker we need to turn off in order to cut the power off to the receptacle in the bedroom. Once you've found it, make a note of its size. In this case, it's a 20 amp breaker. Okay, so here we are in the bedroom, and before we start taking apart the receptacle, just as a precaution, we need to test it to make sure it's shut off. First, I'll take off the outlet cover plate by unscrewing the screw in the middle. Next, I'll want to remove both top and bottom screws that hold the receptacle to the gang box in the wall. After I pull out the receptacle in the box, I'll carefully unscrew the black power wire and the white neutral from the posts. I'll use a half inch drill bit to drill out the knockout in the back of the gang box. Once I've taken it out, I'll test drill with a wooden metal drill bit through the hole until I hit the stucco layer. Drilling through the stucco, I'll use a 5 8 inch masonry bit and a power drill. Once I've drilled through the wall, I'll measure the length of the hole and cut a piece of half inch flex pipe. I'll remove the threaded ring first from my half inch connector and screw it onto the end of my flex pipe. Before I insert the connector end of my flex into the hole, I've got to bore out my hole so it's big enough so it can fit through. When I've done that, I simply insert the flex pipe and maneuver it until the threaded end of the connector inserts into the knockout opening. By accident, I got a 3 quarter inch compression fitting connector. Since it works, I'll use it. A regular threaded ring nut is what is typically used. On the outside end of my flex, I'll screw on a half inch connector that has a 3 quarter inch threaded opening and I'll remove the nut. The gang box I'll be mounting on the exterior wall is a little different than the old one inside the bedroom wall. This exterior box is weatherproof and requires some assembly. First, I'll screw in plugs in all of the threaded openings that I will not be using. Second, I'll attach mounting brackets to the back. As you can see, this box has a 3 quarter inch threaded opening on the back, and all I have to do is screw it onto my connector. Once my box is screwed on, I'll put a level on it to level it off. I'll drill pilot holes where my brackets are so I can clearly mark where I need to drill for my masonry anchors. Before I attach my box, I want to apply some epoxy putty to the gap in the wall around my connector. This way I can seal it from the weather and bugs. This epoxy dries hard like steel in about 20 minutes. First I'll take it out of the tube and break a piece off from the roll, kneading the two gray putties together until they are mixed and uniform. Then I'll apply it to the gap in the wall. The masonry anchors I bought came with a masonry drill bit, so I don't have to guess what size bit I need to use. Once I'm done drilling, I'll slip in the plastic anchors and tap them all the way into the hole. Remember, you must drill the holes deep enough to accommodate these plastic anchors. Well, it's time to attach my box, so I just screw it on until it's snug, remembering to line up the brackets with my anchors, and then I'll insert the screws mounting it to the wall. Next, I'll take my three strands of green, white, and black 12 gauge solid copper wire and run it through my exterior gang box, through the flex, and into the bedroom. In this photo, you can see the three wires I just shoved in through the gang box here in the bedroom. They're running straight down to the floor. In my left hand, I cut three separate short pieces of wire called pigtails. I'll use these to wire the receptacle in the bedroom. The black and white wires that are curved up the wall are the black power line and the white neutral line 
that run into the box from within the wall. So let's begin wiring the receptacle. I'm going to take all three of my black power wires, my pigtail which is about 10 inches in length, my existing wire running into the box, and the new wire I ran in from the outside. I'll trim the ends so they're all about the same length and I'll put a wire nut on them. I'll twist the wire nut till I see the wires start to braid. That way I know the nut is on securely. I'll repeat this with the green ground wires and the white neutral wires. Next I'll strip the ends of my wires with my wire stripper and then use the hole in my stripper to bend my wire so I can attach them to their proper posts. The black power wire always attaches to the gold screw on the right side of the receptacle. If the gold screw is on the left side, you're holding the receptacle upside down. The white neutral always attaches to the silver screw on the left and the green ground wire always attaches to the green ground screw on the bottom. I always leave enough extra wire to make a loop before I shove it all back into the box. You never want to cut the wire too short before wiring something up. Remember, leave yourself plenty of slack. Okay, so I'm done wiring this receptacle. I'll screw it back onto the box and then put the cover plate back on. Now we're going to wire the receptacle in the box outside. This one will be a little different, unlike the receptacle in the bedroom. The one out here is a GFCI receptacle that has a built-in breaker. I start by cutting two pigtails out of the green ground wire and attach all three green wires with a wire nut. One pigtail will attach to the ground screw in the box. The other will attach to the ground screw on the receptacle. The old gang box in the bedroom didn't have a ground screw attached to the box. All of the gang boxes today have ground screws. Since I'm tying into the end of an existing circuit, and I have no wires that continue on, it's very easy to wire a GFCI receptacle. On the back you can see a yellow strip of tape covering the bottom gold and silver post on either side. These are the posts that carry the load. I don't want to connect my wires to the load posts. I want to connect my wires to the line posts and they will always be marked on the back of the receptacle. The white neutral wires to the silver, the black power wires to the gold. Well, my wiring is done, so I'll loop my wires together and stuff them neatly into the box. Then I'll screw the receptacle to the box on the top and on the bottom. Finally, I'll put on a really nice, slim, weatherproof cover and screw that right onto the box. Well, that's all there is to it. This is one way to install an outdoor receptacle. But wait, I'm not done yet. I've got to go back to the breaker box and turn the breaker back on to check and see if everything's working. I'll test the outdoor GFCI receptacle first, and yes, I have power there. So I'll go back to the bedroom and test the receptacle there. And yes, I've got power there too. Well folks, that's all there is to it. This is simply another free service tutorial provided to you by Roundel. Thanks for watching.